recognising from iFilm London, specialist in film and boxing. But what you may not know is that he's a hardened Arsenal fan. How are you doing, Pete? I'm alright. How are you, Robert? You alright? Tell us about um, your love of Arsenal because I, I know you've been coming to Arsenal for years. Yeah, I mean, um, I first started going in the early 90s. Um, first season ticket was when Bruce Riot. Um, had his one season at Arsenal and um, yeah I mean I've had a season for 17 years now I think I've probably missed a handful of games over the last 17 years and yeah I mean I don't go away as much as I'd want to go away but you know it's not always possible so I get to as many away games as possible away games are always the best games so yeah. For 17 years what was your to be honest, it's hard to differentiate between uh, Wenger's three title-winning seasons. Um, the first season, you know, the likes of Petit and Vieira and Overmars, that was a great team. You know, we hadn't really had a lot of success while I've been going to Arsenal, so that was, you know, a very good, very good team. Didn't stay together very long after that. And then Wenger rebuilt his team in 2001-2002, which was another great team. And then. The, the, the invincible season, I suppose you'd have to say, 2003, 2004. But those players seem so far-fetched now. Like you know, we had a team full of superstars with Burkamp, Henri, take your pick. You know, we used to sing. You know, we got Dennis Burkamp, we got the best player in the world. We used to sing them songs, and we don't sing them songs anymore, which is a, a, a massive worry. That I know that me and you have spoke about many a time. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm, we're hopeful that Wenger will recreate another team, whether it be this team or you know a team in the in the coming years. But you know, how long are we going to wait for? Are you in the Wenger camp? Yeah, one million percent. I've probably gone through a couple of days uh, while Wenger's been here, uh, where I've, you know I got frustrated and probably thought you know maybe it is time for a change, but not really. No, I think Wenger should stay here. I think um, you know. It, there's an argument for we haven't gone through seven years without a trophy, which is, you know, it's, you can't argue with that when supporters say that. But you know, I'm, I'm for Wenger. I've always been for Wenger. If we were to bring someone else in, someone like a Mourinho or someone um, or a, a Guardiola, you know, would it do any difference? You don't know until that happens. So you know, but at the moment, I'm, I'm still saying give Wenger time. It's just this is a brand new team. Don't forget. Brand new team, brand new players. Give them time, give all the big players time to gel and see what happens. Yeah, to be honest, it's worked out perfect because the game's at 12.45. Nottingham's only about 100 miles from London, so it would literally be game finishes at like quarter past two or whenever, half two or whatever, straight in the car, straight down. Um, the M1 uh, to, to Nottingham, and I'll, I'll be there in plenty of time. That's, that kickoff's done me a favour, really, because I'll be honest with you, if I had to, and I'll, I'll probably, I've said this as well, and I'll say the same thing to Carl Frotch, if it had clashed, Carl Frotch and Youssef Mack and Arsenal Tottenham, I would have gone to the Arsenal Tottenham thing, and you know, if I had to miss the Carl Frotch thing, I hate to say it, but that's what I would have done. There's no way I'm, one game in a year you see at the Emirates for Arsenal Tottenham, there's no way I would, you know, I'd be missing that. So. Predictions for that game next week? Uh, to be honest, I think all rest to what happens today. I think um, you know if, if, if they don't put on a confident display today, I think that you know they're going to go into the game against Tottenham with a bit of lack of confidence. Which you know Tottenham probably not as good as they was last year. They've lost arguably their two best players in Van der Vaart and Modric, but. You know, Tottenham Arsenal, it doesn't, you know, all the history and all the, the, the form goes out the window, if you like. And so, you know, I, I, I'm confident next week that, like I said, if they can put on a performance here against Fulham, I think they could. It's not going to be a tight game, it's not going to be a walkover, it's not going to be like, probably not like 5 2 last season, but it wasn't a walkover last season anyway, they were 2 0 down in that game. But I, I'm confident that they'll win next week, so 2 1, I'll say. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I, I, I called a draw before the game when I spoke to you earlier on. So I think Fulham are a slightly underestimated team. We've never, Fulham have never come to Arsenal before and uh, we've never really turned them over, as far as I can remember, in recent years. But um, they started off really well. Um, they got two goals. I mean, one was from a corner, one was from a mistake. But to me, in the first half, they weren't creating enough chances. Um, and, like I said, the goal... Uh, that Berbatov scored obviously give Fulham the incentive to go and get the equaliser and at 2-all it was still all to play for. Um, second half 
I thought, you know, they, they, they played better than they have been in, in the second half. Um, being overrun in midfield, I mean, it, it, you don't usually hear um, an Arsenal team being overrun in midfield, especially by Fulham, but I thought Fulham played really well on the counter. Ruiz was a handful, Berbatov was at times unplayable, very hard to get the ball off, and uh, he's a very intelligent player. And Like I said, I, I think a, a draw was probably a, a fair result if we didn't have that last minute penalty. I haven't seen it again, it looked a bit droopy, it looked like the ball sort of, he couldn't have really taken it. I can't remember, I don't know what defender it was, couldn't take his hand out of the way, but um, you got to be disappointed we didn't get all three points because the last kick of the game come to our setter. remember is a lot of these teams that come to the Emirates it's like they treat it as a cup final so you know I'm not saying it's a day out for Fulham because it's, it's far from that but you know I didn't think today was going to be an easy game given Arsenal's form and Fulham aren't like I said aren't a bad team they've got players like Berbatov in that team that can that you know on their day they can destroy you and uh, yeah, I wasn't too confident today that they'd get away with it but they could have got out of jail with that Arteta took the penalty Arteta probably had one of his poorest games of the season personally it's easy to say it now but Juru had probably his best game for us and with him on two goals it was temp maybe tempting to have let him take the penalty but it's easy to say that now Arteta missed it that Drew or maybe Drew Rude should have taken the penalty but um, <laughs> you know it feels like a defeat I'll be honest with you it feels like a defeat um, so one point yeah I think the problem is, after nine or ten games, or how many games we've played, we seem to be sort of, um, it's very tight from probably after the top three or four down to, you know, 15th place or something, it's, it's very tight. So we're getting sucked into that at the moment, and like I said, the, the results are not coming at the moment. I mean, defeat at Norwich, defeat at, against Chelsea, defeat at Old Trafford, now draw here today, it's all drop points, regardless of who you're playing. Like you said, we should be beating teams like Norwich, we should be not losing to teams like Man United and Chelsea, but you can understand those defeats. But, um, yeah, no, there's a, there's a lot there's a lot to be worked on in that. Dif you know, Steve Bowles come in. I'm not going to knock Steve Bowles because you know I don't know what sort. Of, but that zonal marking thing doesn't seem to be helping Arsenal whatsoever because it's part of the reason why Berbatov had a more or less a free run to do that because players are not being picked up with that in that zonal system. But um, to me as well, Carl Zola. There's too much pressure on him as a playmaker because in that team, if you look for it, over the years we've always had that playmaker. Carl Zola's that playmaker, but there's no one else really uh, that has that. He's that type of player in that team. There's a lot of pressure on him to deliver in all the games, and he's not going to deliver in all the games. It's his first season in the Premiership. Um, he needs a rest, really, Carl Zola, to be honest. But again, you take Carl Zola at that team, creativity-wise, in the midfield especially. I said, to, I said to you before the game that they, I think they needed um, a positive display today. Yeah, it was, parts of it were positive, but overall, you've got to be disappointed with what, what happened. And I think next week, like a couple of fans said after the game, the form book goes out the window. So hopefully we can turn our season around, really, because they're in a bit of a rut at the moment. You know, they're, they're not winning games. They're, they're, they're conceding a lot of goals.